In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to calculate the maximum circuit length for resistance to comply with the maximum disconnection times required by BS7671. This video is intended as a guide for those working in the industry. The topics are based on questions that I am asked from time to time and on my experience over more than 20 years. To comply with the disconnection time, we need to limit the impedance of the circuit to within the maximum ZS from table 41 in BS7671. The maximum ZS is calculated as follows. ZS is equal to UO multiplied by C min divided by IA. Where the protected device is not listed in BS7671, it is possible to obtain the information from the manufacturer. I explained maximum ZS in another video on my channel and I will add a link at the top of the screen. So you'll be familiar with the way that we calculate ZS by adding the value for ZE plus R1 plus R2. But what do we do when we don't know what the ZE is? When we are calculating the maximum length of a circuit, it makes sense to use the maximum values for ZE. So 0.8 for a TNS system or 0.35 for a TNCS system. Even if we can measure the exact ZE, by using the maximum, it will help us to ensure that the installation remains compliant over its lifetime. So we know what to use for ZE. We now need to know what to use for R1 plus R2. This can be calculated by using the values in table I1 of the on-site guide. The table provides tabulated values quoted in milliohms per meter for a variety of sizes of line conductor and CPC. These figures are multiplied by the length and a correction factor of 1.2 and then divided by 1000, as shown in the example here. It is necessary to use a factor of 1.2 to allow for the fact that the impedance of the circuit will increase when under load. So for the same reason that we subtract 20% from the maximum ZS in table 41 when we're testing a circuit, when we're designing a circuit from scratch, we need to use a multiplier to add that 20%. This same method is also used to calculate R1 plus Rn by using the value for, condu for conductors of the same size. If the cable size is not shown in the on-site guide, the information can be obtained from the cable manufacturer's data sheet, which can be found by contacting the manufacturer and is sometimes available on the manufacturer's website. This is useful if you want to use an SWA cable and you need to know the impedance value for the line conductor, but also the impedance of the steel wire armor. If you would like to know more about using SWA and CPC, please see the link to the video at the top of the screen. So at the bottom of the screen here, we've got a calculation for maximum circuit length, which is a transposition of the equation I've shown above. But here, because we're looking for the length, what we do is we take the maximum ZS, we subtract the maximum ZE and then divide by the tabulated values for R1 and R2, which we find in the on-site guide, and then multiply that by 1.2. There is only one difference to this equation when we're carrying out the circuit length. As you noticed before, we divide by a thousand. This is because the values are given in milliohms per meter. So when we're carrying out this equation, we have to first divide the tabulated value of R1 and R2 by 1000. So here we have an example of the calculation for the maximum length for both radial and ring circuits. For circuits wired in a ring, when we are measuring to the farthest point of the circuit, it's necessary to add a multiplier of 4 to the equation to allow for the loop of the circuit. So at the bottom of the screen here, I've shown the full calculation, including dividing the tabulated value for R1 plus R2 by 1000. So here we have an example calculation for a radial circuit. A radial circuit wired in 2.5 mm PVC PVC cable with a 1.5 mm CPC protected by a 20 amp type B RCBO to BSEN61009. The earthing system is a TNCS or PME system. 
So the maximum ZS would be 2.19, and that's from table 41.3. The maximum ZE is going to be 0.35 for a PME system. And the tabulated values for R1, R2 is 19.51 milliohms per meter. And that's from the on-site guide table I1. So if you look at the table, you'll see a list of different sizes of cable, um, combinations of different line conductors and CPCs. And if you look for the 2.5 millimeter line conductor with a 1.5 millimeter CPC, you'll get the value of 19.51. So here we have the equation at the bottom. The maximum length is equal to, in brackets, 2.19 minus 0.35 and that's divided by 19.51 divided by 1000 and then multiplied by the correction factor of 1.2 and that gives us the answer of 78 meters. So one tip that I found when doing this particular equation is use the whole value that you get in your calculator rather than trying to uh, round it down to two or three decimal places. I found that that really makes a difference to the answer that you get. So when you divide 19.51 by 1000, use the whole number that you get, which should be 0.01951. So there we have the answer there, the maximum length of 78 meters. So here we have another example calculation, but this time, for a ring socket circuit. A ring socket circuit wired in 2.5 millimeter PVC PVC cable with a 1.5 millimeter CPC protected by a 32 amp type B RCBO to BSEN 61009. The earthing system again is a TNCS or PME system. The maximum ZS for a 32 amp type B protected device is 1.37 and that's from table 41.3. The maximum ZE again is 0.35 because it's a PME system. And then the tabulated value for R1, R2 again is 19.51 and that's from the on-site guide table I1. So here we have the equation below and the equation is the same except for the fact that we have this multiplier of 4 to account for the fact that it's a ring circuit. So if we do that equation that comes to 174 meters. Now, 174 metres seems very long, and it's much longer than it would be in practice. And if you do the volt drop equation, I, th I think that you would find that um, the maximum length would be much less than that. So it's important to do the equations for both the impedance and the volt drop when calculating the length of the circuit. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel where I hope to add more videos on electrical engineering subjects.